Hello and welcome to a Maker Studios Spring Makerathon. We are so excited to have you here and I am so excited to be back again. I was here for the Galentine's event where I showed you how to make a simple serving tray with one of Amy's beautiful stencils and I hope you enjoyed that. I'm super excited about our project today as well. My name is Michelle Baker and I am the owner of Wild Tree Lane located here in Knoxville, Tennessee and we are inside of the Painted Perfect and Company at 9715 Kingston Pike. So if you're here local, definitely step in and check us out. We carry both a Maker Studio products as well as Amy Howard at home. And we are always happy to demonstrate the product and hopefully inspire you to make beautiful things inside your home. So without further ado, let's head on over to the project table. Okay, so for today's project, we are going to be making a tag style door hanger. And for this project, I am going to use the a Maker Stencil Bon Bon Bunny, which has become one of my uh, favorite spring Easter stencils. And at the end of my project, I'm also gonna show you um, how I did the same project with the um, Happy Easter stencil, which is another one of my favorites. As you can see, it's um, well used and well loved. But if you take care of your stencils and you put them back in the packaging, uh, they will last you a very, very long time. And I've used this one quite a bit. We're also going to use um, Amy Howard's At Home um, One Step Paint in the Ballet White. I absolutely love this paint uh, for several reasons. One, it, um, it smells amazing. I know that sounds crazy that uh, a paint could smell amazing, but it does and uh, it actually makes my craft room smell quite nice. So I'm gonna be using this. Um, this paint also has excellent coverage and you can use it with the stencils, which is another added bonus and it's just a, a wonderful product. I'm going to be using the Amy Howard at Home English Walnut Gel Stain, um, also another one of my craft room favorites. I've used a number of stains over the years, and um, since I've been using this, it is my go-to. It, uh, it smells nice. It's not fumey at all, and I can use it inside. It dries quickly, and it's um, a very clean stain. It's a water-based gel stain, and uh, so I am not wearing or not having to wear gloves when I'm working on my projects. And then I'm going to use the a Maker Studio um, Gel Art Hush Your Mouth Blue for this project. And when I am finished with the project, um, I won't do this on camera, but with all of my door hangers and projects, I seal those projects and I will be using the new matte sealer, which I absolutely love. It, um, it's a great sealer that goes on, I mean, it's truly matte with no gloss and um, it's not streaky at all and I just, I love it. So we'll be using that. Um, a foam brush for my stain, and then um, for the stencil, I'm gonna use one of these uh, scrapers, and I already have one that's pre-cut that I'm gonna be um, using for this project. And I am making, as I said, the uh, tag door hanger. So we, uh, we cut all of our items on um, a, a laser machine, and so these are laser cut, uh, tags and these are about 15 inches for this project and I'll be using two. I've already done the backs of the project um, and one of the other sides just for the sake of time. I didn't think you would want to watch me uh, staining and painting four sides on camera. So um, I went ahead and pre-stained uh, pre and painted the other pieces of this project. But I'll go ahead and um, demonstrate on this piece what I did. So I'm gonna start out with our um, gel stain in the English Walnut. There are a number of colors that you could use for this project. I, um, I'm really fond of this color. I've used it on a number of uh, door hangers, but there, um, there are some other colors that um, more recently I've used, like the Auburn, Maho Auburn Mahogany, which would also work really well with this project. Okay. 
I open up my stain. It's always a good idea when you're finished with your stain to clean your um, edges so that it comes off easier the next time you use it. So I try to remember to do that so that those open easily. Okay. And you can apply the stain in a number of ways. You could use um, a sponge. I usually keep auto sponges in the craft room that I cut up into little pieces. And so if I'm doing a big project, I'll, um, I'll use those. Foam brushes are great. You could use a t-shirt um, or lint-free cloth. There's a number of different ways that you, you can apply the stain. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start putting this on. And it is truly, truly a just um, easy stain to work with, as you can see. So I hope everyone is having an amazing day. Um, I always enjoy being um, a part of a maker's events. Like I said earlier, I did the uh, Galant Galantine's event earlier in the year and that was just a lot of fun. And um, I'm excited to be doing this today. It's a great way to spend the day. All right, so I'm going to, I'm trying not to use too much. I hate to waste stain or, or any product. Um, so I'm not going on super liberally, but just enough to kind of coat my project. I'm getting a little bit on my craft table and I think my foam brush is coming apart. So let me switch that out. These are just the little um, inexpensive foam brushes that you can order on Amazon. Usually they hold together really well, but every once in a while I get one that is coming off the, coming off the handle. Okay. So I'm just smoothing that out. Like I said, there's a number of different ways that you can put this on. I probably could have done it a little bit quicker with a bigger sponge, but um, I use these foam brushes for a number of product or projects and decided I would use this brush. And like I said, the, the great thing about this stain is, or one of the great things is the smell. It's not, um, it actually has a pleasant smell. It's um, something that's really easy to work with indoors and not, um, you know, not get a headache or um, not be able to tolerate. Sorry, I just got that all over my table. And it cleans up easy, as you can see. <laughs> And if I don't get it all the way to my edges, that's okay because when I wipe this off, um, I can spread it out to those edges to fill in those corners. Okay. Put a little more on just to wrap this up. This is why I went ahead and pre-stained the other sides and the rest of these, because I know you want me to get to the good stuff with the stencils and the paint, and we're getting there. All right, okay, so that's on. And what I'm gonna do, now if I was doing a larger piece or a furniture piece, I would not do this. Um, I would use a lint-free rag, but for uh, something like a door hanger and on this uh, birch plywood, paper towels um, really don't cause me any problem. And so I tend to use those when I'm, when I'm working on projects like this to wipe off my stain. And as you can see, those edges that I didn't quite get to, um, I'm filling in with the stain and just kind of working it off. And you can see it's leaving a lot of really great color behind. And coming off pretty, pretty easily here. Just get another paper towel. 
and this stain dries really quickly to the touch so that it's workable. And you can also use this stain with the stencils um, and it does not dry, you know, into the mesh quickly so that you can, you can work with it. An amazing product. Okay. So I'm just going to rub this down to where it is not coming off on my paper towel. Okay. Actually, I'm going to close my jar here so that I don't make an even bigger mess. Okay. All right. So we're almost done with this stain. Okay. And I'm just going to take my um, heat gun. You could do this with a hair dryer as well and just speed up the process a little bit. Just make sure that it's good and dry. Okay. Yeah, that's great. It's not really, not much is coming off on my paper towel. to go. All right, so now I'm going to take my um, Amy Howard at Home Ballet White. Let's see. I'm going to pop this open. And I'm going to just use a, uh, just a chip brush. And I thought I had a plate in here, but I do not. So I'm going to just, um, I'm going to grab something to put a little bit of my paint in so that I um, am not working out of my can. Um, anytime you're using, especially something like a uh, chip brush, you don't really want to stick your brush in there because uh, you could leave behind debris. Oh, and I just poured out a little more than I really wanted to use. That's okay. All right, I'm gonna set that off to the side. I am a messy crafter. I don't know about the rest of you, but I, um, I do tend to make a mess here and there. Okay, so dry brushing is one of those things that, um, you know, everybody, some people do it different. Um, for the purposes of this project, I am wanting to go a little heavier in the middle and bring it out to my edges. Um, if I was just doing a, a straight up dry brush, you know, I'd offload more paint, but um, I'm wanting my middle part of my project to be pretty, um, pretty white so that my stencil design shows up really well. Okay. All right, and then I'm gonna bring it out to my sides. I don't wanna go off camera here. Um, but I'm just gonna bring it out and up off my board. So that I'm leaving some of this side exposed just to um, give it kind of a rustic look. Rustic or um, vintage or weathered. I think all would apply here. And just bringing it off the sides with my brush, kind of holding my brush um, sideways. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over and bring it out this way. And I, again, just trying to keep my middle part um, pretty, or not thick with paint, but just more paint in the middle. The sides and if you get too much paint on when you're doing this you can always go over it with some fine grit sandpaper and lighten it up or bring your edges out a little bit more 
um, like I said, if you, if, you, if you get too much paint. But I don't think this is going to be too much at all for what I'm going for. If I, um, you know, was doing something a little different, I may not want it this thick and really give it more of a, a true um, dry brushed look. But this is the look that I'm going for with this because I really want my, um, my stencil to pop. I'm going to go up here and do this side and get it all over my table, which is just fine. That's what a craft table is for, right? Okay. All right, so I got it. A little thicker in a couple of spots I'm not gonna I'm not going to sand this one because I do kind of like it and like I said there are um, there are gonna be two tags that we are putting together for this door hanger um, and my craft room smells amazing right now this paint um, I just think it's crazy that um, paint can smell as yummy as this does all right I'm gonna kind of bring it off here just a little bit more and just kind of give it more of a weathered look on these sides and these are gonna overlap so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go overboard I'm just trying to get it to look a little more like this one and I do the fronts and backs of my door hangers when I do them not everybody does um, I have a glass door and I can, uh, or glass, um, clear stained glass door, and so I can see the back of my door hangers um, when I walk up to my door. So it's just something that I am um, cognizant of and do. So I'm going to take my um, heat gun and just give this a little quick dry. This paint dries very quickly. Put a little something right there on that but it dries very quickly and is really easy to work with um, if you're using a hair dryer or heat gun you just want to keep it moving and not get too close to your project so you don't bubble your paint but if you do uh, with something like this you like I said you could you could go over it with some fine grit sandpaper and smooth that out this particular project has texture to it so um, you've got got room for forgiveness. Alright, so I'm just going to get this really good and dry. Okay. Alright, I think we're about there. Give it a couple more seconds. All right, I think we're there. Yes, so as you can see, I can rub my hand on it. This is good and dry. All right, so when we're done with this, um, this is going to sit kind of like this. And these little pieces are gonna go, um, I have one for each side, the front and the back, are gonna go like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and kind of just lay this out and open my, um, my stencil. And like I said, I love, I love this stencil. When it came out, I had to jump on it um, because I just love the bunny in this stencil and the detail that it has and could not wait to use it. So what I'm gonna do, I am gonna peel it off of my backer like so. There we go. And I am going to, I think, put my bunny down here towards the bottom right here in the middle just kind of line it up with the, the 
top hole of this hanger right here. And I'm going to burnish it uh, really well because, like I said, this piece has a little bit of texture to it. And so I want to make sure that, um, that I get this down and that there's no bubbles or anything in my mesh so that the um, ink will adhere. And I usually use my fingers um, versus a scraper or a brayer just so I can feel where those bubbles are and make sure that, um, that I get them and I get this down really good. All right, so now I'm going to, and I forgot my plate, so I'm gonna go ahead and try to work with putting my ink directly on, let's see, on my scraper here and work with it this way. Okay, and I'm gonna start up here. Um, if you are worried that you are going to get in another part of the stencil, you can always tape off the sections that you're not using. But this one has a little bit of space in between the designs, and so I'm not too worried that I'm gonna go off the off the bunny into um, territory that I don't want to. All right, so I'm gonna, and you can also use the um, squeegees for this. They work just as well. Um, I just feel like I have a little bit more control with the um, with the ink in the mesh with this tool. That is just me. I just have a little more, I think a little more precision might be the word I'm looking for too. Which is easier for me, for me. If I was doing a, a much bigger stencil, I would probably work with the, with the squeegee. But this one, I am using this. Okay. All right. This bunny is just so handsome. I really, really like him. And I'm just really excited to be using him in this project. All right, I'm gonna set my ink over here. And I'm gonna get all of my excess ink, just making sure that it is down in my mesh. Good. All right. All right, I think that's pretty good. I'm gonna set this right here because I'm gonna use it for another part. I'm gonna go up here to the corner and start pulling my stencil. And look at that guy. Oh my gosh, he is too handsome. Isn't that awesome? He is just, he is too awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna try to do this holding my stencil here so that I, okay, I want him to go like this when it's done. Okay, so I'm gonna take this top part before I drop this stencil into my water. And I want this to kinda of come off the side a little bit. So I'm gonna line it up. And I am going to use some of the remainder of this ink I didn't burnish that quite as well as I did the bunny, so hopefully we are okay. Seems to be down pretty good. All right. Okay. This is coming out really pretty. I love this design. I hope you do too. 
Okay, so I'm gonna put this in, actually I'm gonna put this to the side just in case I need it. And I'm gonna pull this up. Oh, look at that. Look how pretty that is. And I'm immediately going to put my stencil in a water bath. Um, if you're working with any of the uh, mediums, you want to get that stencil in water as soon as you're done. And I'm just gonna make sure that my ink is good and dry. Like so. And it dries very quick as well. And this design is just, I love it. I think he is just, he is so handsome. Okay. So, this is what the Bon Bon Bunny will look like on this door hanger. So I'm gonna put this off to the side. Um, to put this together, I would use a, um, a wood glue, and I also add a little stick fast to my pieces as I'm putting it together so that it, it, it adheres really well. And I'm gonna put this one off to the side and I'm gonna bring out the one that um, I used the Easter stencil for. So you can see um, the, the Easter stencil that I showed you earlier, the bunny, the carrots, and, and the design. The border at the bottom of that stencil could be used in so many different ways for this project. Uh, you could use it in the middle like I did, or you could even um, bring that up the um, up the side where you took this piece and layered it all the way down to make you know one whole side like this. A um, number of different things you can do, but this is what the door hanger looks like attached with just a simple jute string, and then I would take a bow like this and put at the top. And I usually staple my bows down and some greenery and maybe a little bit of cotton to finish off the door hanger. So that is my project for today. I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, I'll make sure to go back afterwards and respond to those. And I hope that you all have an amazing day. Thanks for watching.